Thank you. Thank you. It's about the 1980s. His name is Jay. Jay is born in New Jersey. His mom and dad are Jewish. She is a nurse by trade. His dad is an accountant. If you and I were to ask Jay, tell me about your grammar school years, he'd say, you know, uneventful, I just kind of did my thing. If we were to ask him about high school, it may be a little different. In that, he would tell you that since I'm not a good athlete, I don't get a lot of attention. I am not scholastically there. I'm scholastically challenged, so I'm not in that group. As a matter of fact, I just kind of exist. I'm in the band. I do play the flute. But then they say one day a group asked him to be in the drama club. Now, he'll tell you, I'm not sure if they asked me to be in the drama because they need people or because I'm that talented, but be that as it may. He says he does a pretty good job. He gets involved in two shows that they put on for the school. One is The Odd Couple, the other, Oliver. And man, he just finally feels like this is where he's most comfortable, being that he doesn't fit in any really where else. So finally, he goes to college in Boston University. He goes into drama. And when he's there, he's not even there a semester. When somebody comes up, the director, the producer, the head of the school, and says, you know, let's be honest. You may have the heart of Hamlet. You may have the soul of Hamlet. You may even have the desire of Hamlet. But you're not Hamlet. You are physically compromised. And therefore, you just don't have the look. As a result of it, he gets a little frustrated, decides, well, i got to do something. He leaves school. He decides that he wants to be a magician. That lasts about 30 days till he got to decide that he has to eat. Then he decides that maybe at the end of the day, maybe, maybe he'll be a comedian. That lasts equally as long. Well, i got to tell you, as luck would have it, as the good Lord would have it, he actually gets a bit part in a musical on Broadway called Broadway Bound. And if you've never seen it, he's really an excellent singer. I mean, and maybe even a better dancer. And when you come to find out who Jay is, you're going to be shocked that this guy can play at that level. He does such a good job that he start, they liked his voice, so they used him in TV for voiceovers. Like, for example, uh, he was a voiceover in Dilbert, uh, Dinosaurs, Duckman. But then he gets a bit part in a movie called The Producers. And then all of a sudden, man, they gave him another bit part in the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Then he got another part, A Christmas Carol, The Man Who Saved Christmas. And then he gets his big break. He gets to be on Pretty Woman with Richard Gere. And all of a sudden, man, the world starts to open up. You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, the problem is you probably don't even remember him from then, but you know what you're remembering? He's in this sitcom in a series about absolutely nothing, brothers and sisters in Christ. And as a result of it, it gets even better because he's up against Danny DeVito for the part. But he gets the part because the part he plays is him. He is insecure. He is, a, in his own words, a fat, short, chubby guy with glasses who lives with his folks, and it's a Jewish family. Man, brother and sister in Christ, he has some of the greatest lines in television. He tells his buddy, Jerry, Jerry, if you take all the good things that happened in my life and you put them in one day, he said, it's, it's not a bad day. Man, my brother and sister in Christ, you know what's the height of irony? Everybody on the series Seinfeld wins an Emmy but him. Yeah, you know Jay, but you know him as George Costanza. His real name is Jason Alexander. But you know what's amazing? To this day, if you were to ask him, tell me one thing you're thankful for, without hesitation, without any thought, he'll say, it's my folks. It's my parents. He said, I had great parents. Thank God, because what I have is because of through them. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the short of the gospel, that has everything to do with saying thanks. My brother and sister Christ, now remember, if you're a first century Jew, there are things that you need to understand. Crucifixion, regrettably, was a way of punishment back in the day. A way of life, or an end of life for those that were following it. There are many types of crosses. We had those that were made in the X, like St. Andrew, hence why my vestments are like they are. They had crosses that were in the shape of a T, some in shape that looked more like a cross, some were up higher, some were lower, because, you know, the dogs got to eat too. And then also, they make great torches so that Caesar, a pilot, can walk at night. You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, for a Jew, this is a normal way of life. Moreover, brothers and sisters in Christ, they would scourge you until they saw the entrails, until they saw your internal organs. But moreover, if you're a first century Jew, and you notice that he's wearing a crown of thorns, you will go all the way back to Abraham, 
And when he's about, when Abraham's about to sacrifice Isaac, and the angel stops him. And then I, the question is asked, well, where's the sacrifice? He says, the good Lord will provide the lamb, not a lamb, the lamb. And where is the, quote, lamb or ram caught? He's caught in a thicket with thorns. So when you see the good Lord with thorns, man, brother, and sister Christ, as the first century Jew, you start to put pieces back together. You know what's amazing? According to St. Bridget, which is tradition, maybe a small t, you need to understand one thing. At the crucifixion, Christ was followed by at least 600 soldiers around him. Their job was to push, shove, keep the crowds calm, if you will. They would spit on him, beat him, knock him, curse him, make fun of him. Can you imagine? You walk for just an hour with 600 people around you that do nothing but push or shove or spit or call you names or belittle you or condemn you. Can you imagine that of the 600, there are over 30 executioners Make sure the cross is set right. Make sure the nails go in right. Make sure the pieces come together. Brothers and sisters Christ, I mean, 30 people to kill somebody? I mean, we do have rules. Male brothers and sisters Christ, did you know that he carried a cross 12 foot tall, 8 foot wide, and he carried it one mile, complete, with the crossbar all intact? Or brothers and sisters Christ, do you know if you take the total number of times that they beat him, from the minute that Pilate gave him the symbol of guilt to the time he says it is finished, do you know, according to the saints, he was beat over 6,000 times. His body received over 1,000 wounds. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, in the, in, the fly, in, in the whipping itself, they just don't whip you with a normal whip. They came up with different ways. Man, man could be diabolical. They called up what they call cattails, which means it's one whip with several fringes in the back. And they had these several tips, if you will, either have rocks, a nail of sorts, or a hook, so that they could even lacerate the flesh even more. Brother and sister in Christ, do you know that they actually hit him in the head over 100 times? They spit in his face over 100 times. Somebody spits in your face one time. I bet I know where you're going to be for the next hour. Probably somewhere closer to that part of town. Brother and sister in Christ, do you know the crown of thorns alone was over 100 pricks to the head? 20 were legitimate holes. Three were mortal. Whether they beat him or not, he will die by the crown of thorns. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, and here he is on the crucifix. He's up there for three hours. He's got eight inches spikes in his hands and a 16-inch one roughly in his feet. And according to tradition, they didn't get it right, so they had to back it out and renail it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if there's one thing you and I should do today is say, thank you. For what you have done. Because we won't make the gates of heaven. We will not have redemption, much less salvation. Man, Lord, well, for whatever it's worth, thank you for allowing me to grow up in the greatest country in the world still to this day. Thank you for allowing me to worship freely without any reservations. Thank you for my children, which are the greatest blessing. Thank you for my parents who are paying my way to be educated that I could grow up in the right faith, that I could live in a peace-filled home. Thank you, Lord, for my spouse who has put up with me and still loves me to this day. Thank you for everything you have given me. You gave me existence. You've given me a love. You wrote your name in my heart. And how did I treat you? I've condemned you. And I have sinned. Me and my brothers and sisters in Christ, if there's ever a day to give him thanks, it is today. I believe God resides everywhere, but specifically in three places, if you will. I believe he is in heaven without question. I believe he's in the tabernacle, absolutely, and without resolve. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe he's in a thankful heart. So for each of you that give thanks before your head hits the pillow, May you hear in your hearts, thank you. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.